turns I spread like germ. Bless the globe with the pestilence. The hard headed never learn. This my testament to those burned. Play my position in the game of life, standing firm. On foreign land, jump the gun out the frying pan. Purpose was to revive the perception of music and the value of music, be it monetarily or artistically, as a work of art. And in order to do that, we had to give it the same trajectory as a contemporary art piece, from creation to exhibition to sale. And for that, I said, well, why not apply the oldest exploitation form of music as we know from the Renaissance age, when it was a commissioned commodity, adopt that method and apply it in a modern world, which is completely extreme, doing exactly the opposite of what record labels are trying to sell the most records. Here we go, we're trying to sell the least, you know, preferably <laughs> as little as one, which is... <laughs> one copy. Yes, it's one copy. So I'm not going to hear it on Spotify. No. I hope not. <laughs> and your plan is that, well, maybe it'll display in a few galleries and people will be able to hear it in the galleries. They'll... You'll have to come to a museum, a gallery, and to experience the record. You know, music is always about experience. It, well, it used to be. Now it's data consumption. Now it's part of a daily, you know, you're, you're updating your Facebook, your, your Twitter feed, and, and you're listening to a song. You, you know, you're going through all the songs on offer every day. It's, it, attention span is extremely short. short. There's, there hasn't been a real connection with music anymore not from the artist to the fan and not from the fan to the artist and i think that has devalued it to the point where it's it's just not considered a work of art anymore it's not important anymore what's the music like on the album tell us what it's like because we obviously can't hear it but what, what, what's, what's it's been completely produced in 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 the style of the 90s distinctly distinctly 93 to 97 Wu-Tang Clan and that was one of the biggest challenges I think is get the guys back in that mind frame more you think about it it does raise a very interesting question about the difference between a piece of art mm -hmm. a painting mm -hmm. And a piece of music. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I suppose the big difference is that for a piece of music, the price difference between what one might call the original copy yeah. and all the other reproductions isn't very big. People won't no. pay quite such a big premium for the original. Right. Whereas for painting, of course, there's an absolutely enormous difference between an original exactly. and a printed poster. I, well, that's, that was the big question that I asked myself. And what is this $50, $60 million difference between a microphone and a paintbrush? The only answer I could come up with, it, it is literally exclusivity versus mass replication. The painting is that one piece. Um, you know, you can take prints, but it's not something you can upload and download and have the same thing. Music, you can press up 10 million copies. Anything that can be digitized, it just loses its value immediately. But you see, the painting can be digitized. And it would be such a shame that we're not going to hear... This great work. Well, you will hear it, but you know, you, you hear it in, 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 in a different space, in a, in a different way that actually we tell you how to experience our art. I mean, contemporary artists have always been very keen about how their works have been presented and you know, what the lighting is, where it is. And, and, and I don't see a difference with that with music. Music is a work of art. We don't perceive it as such. We know it is, but we don't perceive it as such anymore. Am I being cynical and thinking somehow at some stage mm. we're all going to hear this album, that it's going to come out, that someone is going to go into a gallery with a little thing in their ear, <laughs> they're going to put their headphones on and they're going to record it. Or the person who buys it, the collector who buys it, might pay millions of I, dollars, yeah. says, you know what I'm going to do with my collection? I would love for this thing to maintain its course as an art piece. I would love for this to disappear into darkness. And, you know, nothing was conventional about this record, from the mixing to the recording. Everything has been so secret to maintain that one copy. I mean, the clan members don't have a copy. RZA himself, the day he heard the record, was done in a way where he couldn't even have it. I mean, we had to fly people in, get it into his <laughs> house. No one was allowed to have a copy. Now, whoever buys it obviously becomes the next master copy owner and can do with it what he wants. But we can always try and discourage the possibilities of commercialization. You can write a contract with the whoever buys it that says they exactly. have to pay you. If it, exactly. If it, if I mean, I would, it. It, it is... It, Where uh, is it now? Where is that one copy? Where is it sitting? Go the, on. the one copy is in, in, in a vault, actually in the shadows of the Atlas Mountains, somewhere buried. <laughs> Tariq, Azugar, uh, Silver Rings, thank you so much. African killer bees, black watch. On your radio, blowing out your watch. From Park Hill, the house of Hornet Hill. Every time you walk by, you're back in a chill. Let's build.